the causes and solutions to diseases, malnutrition, and the medical sins that are killing the world. He's out of Atlanta, Georgia. The truth about COVID-19, Dr. Ronald Cummings and Joseph McCullough, and the real Anthony Fauci, Bill Gates, Big Farm, and Global Human Democracy. We have these books in honor of these folks. So we have these publications for you to read. Now I'm going to say a couple of events for the community to get information on what's going on. Tomorrow, Thorough Black Talk, Tag Keisha Ashe and Brother Black radio show. It's on YouTube and it's streaming on Facebook. That comes on at 8 o'clock. Thorough Black Talk. Our sister Keisha is on, online or on Zoom. You can put your email in there and she will let you know what's going on. Also, on Saturdays, our Philadelphia Connection, Blog Talk Radio, Sister Empress Chi comes on on Saturday at 10.30, Blog Talk Radio, the number is 1319-527-6189. You tune in on Saturdays at 10.30, and that Philadelphia connection with the Million Women's Move, uh, March is real good. And they had an excellent program this week in front of the United Nations in honor of Omea. That was excellent. On Mondays, on Sankofa Radio, every Monday at 10 o'clock, WSYP 95.1, Birmingham, Alabama. Brother Anthony Mohammed and the Irritated Genie has a show come on on 10 o'clock. That's an excellent program. Also, our Baltimore connection, Brother Darren Mohammed, State of the City, Tune In Radio, Saturdays at 12 o'clock, and on Instagram under Mohammed the Camel. That's also on Facebook, and sometimes it comes on on the weekend on Thursday. Also, every Tuesday, also, every Tuesday at 7 o'clock, Dr. Ali, Your Immunity Project, and Kyle Fani Radio. Put your information in the chat. That's an excellent program. Now, out of Newark, New Jersey, African Echoes, every Friday at 8 o'clock, Brother Trust Graham and the African Echo Study Group out of Newark, New Jersey. And they're doing the book, the psychology of self-hatred and the self-hatred and self-defeat toward a reformation of the African mind. That's on Fridays at 8 o'clock. And also on Saturdays, the Know Thyself Study Group <coughs> with Brother True out of Asbury Park. Brother Truss is the mediator of that group. And that's on Saturdays at 1.30. And they're doing the destruction of black civilization by Chancellor Williams. If you put your email in the chat, we'll give you the information. Today, Simotap organization, if you tune in to Simotap, Dr. James McIntosh and his people connected to Simotap will tell you what's going on with his organization. And he also has an excellent program that comes on on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock on WBAI called Minefield. It was an excellent program today. Also, Monday, uh, the 16th, they got buses leaving Union Square going out to Philadelphia for the court date for Momia Abu Jamal. If you're interested, you can go on Simotap or WBAI will let you know when the buses is leaving. Also, every Tuesday at 5 o'clock, you have Community Cop on Manhattan Neighborhood Network with Brother Mike Graves, Noel Leader, and Julian Harper. That program comes on at 5 o'clock, right? 
5 o'clock on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Also, if you want to view all the lectures from Community Cop, you go on YouTube under Community Cop and all the programs that they've been doing for all the years. You can view all of them, study them, go over them, and listen to them. Also, the Brooklyn William Mackey Jr. History Club. You can view all the lectures on the Brooklyn William Mackey Jr. History Club on YouTube, titled BK William Mackey Jr. History Club. So this is information that's going out through the five boroughs and the city. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a speaker here. Good brother, I just met him. And we're going to bring him on. And the title of his lecture, Brother Osiris, is Comedic Esoterica. Comedic Esoterica. Ladies and gentlemen, give a great big hand to our keynote speaker, Brother Osiris. Thank you. He's tough the Temple in Sikkim, where I just announced was a salutation from our ancestry, a salutation of greeting. The Temple in Sikkim, that's peace and power. That's a, that's a greeting known in our kinetic science as the Hikai words of power. We're supposed to be greeting each other with words of power. And I want to give an introduction to that greeting. The temple is the proper greeting for peace, H-E-T-E-P-U. A lot of times today, we use the name for peace, Hotel, which is like, for instance, M Hotel. That's the name for peace, but the actual greeting was with the E and not the O. The temple E M M C K M S E K H E M. That's power. That's what we have here. Crook and the frail. These are the emblems of our ancestry. The crook and the frail. The peace and the power. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I, I feel wonderful within my spirit just to share that with you. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And to share each and one of us at this moment to intone this greeting back. This is what I want to do with us. I want to say, Temple and I'm I want you to follow me. And I'm going to say, Peace and Power. The meaning of what it said. Are uh, y'all ready? The mm -hmm. Temple. The Temple. Oh, come on, that, listen. Remember, these are words of power. <laughs> yeah? These are words of power. And right now, our ancestry, our DNA, and all of that is coming together right now to announce our salutation in our original language, our Kamite language, the language of the pyramid, Kemet, Egypt. All right? So, the temple. The temple. M. M. C. K. Peace and power. Peace and power. Thank you, thank you. You know, in Kwanzaa, they talk about cooperative op operations and economics and, and development. And I always like when we can cooperate with one another, we can get things done. And what I'm going to get done tonight is to announce my name is Osiris X Unepa Nebatecha. 
come in and have a seat. And make laws. This is just most government that preeminent in the world, the legislative. But now we got the judicial branch with lifetime appointees, nine judges. Right. You know? But that's one of the elements of the system of government. Now we got the executive branch. Now I'm going to show you where that comes from. I'm going to show you how it's connected to the period. Those three powers of government, which is extending itself towards world government, which is, uh, which is manifested, are the three pyramids at Giza. See, this is black chimetic. We're going to go a little bit deeper, share a few things that, you know, that need to be amplified. Those three pyramids on the plains of Egypt, Northeast Africa, Egypt, Kemet, they are houses of global and universal government, divine government on this planet. So when they send archaeologists over there at different universities from around the world, and upgrade, dig into the tombs of our ancestors, it's only to have a greater understanding of who they are. And what they learn is who we are. Now, they've known this for a long time. Now, I'm going to point out to you is how the whole plan was the divine plan of your, of your ancestors. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Y'all gotta listen to what I'm telling you. Yes, sir. Let me show you how the power of forecasting into the future. It's about manifesting these attributes. We can talk about them all the time, but it's to the degree of manifestation. You know, that's what the call is now. You know, we got different platforms that we are to arise into our awareness, our social awareness, you know, when we came over here. Although we got a history of already being here. <laughs> you know, over there, Kingdom, Timmy King, North, South. Central America. But again, let me share what you did. The pyramid system was already here. Up there in what is known as Mexico. They got nothing but pyramids over there. We got mountains and pyramids here. There is a form of the pyramid, a narrow pyramid called the Tikanu, the obelisk what is known as the narrow pyramid. So that pyramid on that dollar bill is also represented by the obelisk, the narrow pyramid, all right? Um, I, all I want you to do is get the understanding. It ain't no conspiracy for us. <laughs> this is revelation. This ain't no conspiracy for us. The facts is in the manifestation, what our path has been. So, when we talk to each other now, that's why I said we need to embrace words of power. That's right. He temple M. Shikim. Peace and power. Let me share a little bit more about this sign for y'all. You no, know, the executive branch The White House, the President, yeah, his emblem is the bird, the eagle. 
He was a part of the Falcon family, the largest in North America, one of the ball he was playing. Nice bird. It's a beautiful thing because it was already represented here by our other native people. The eagle, the bald head. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, it was represented in South America as well. All the eagles, all the falcons, all the animals that come with us. See, we gotta, we gotta speak about all of these elements because we, it's, it's necessary that we understand, uh, necessary that we understand that all of these life forms have been traveling too. They got a place in this future. They wisdom teachers. The different beings manifesting around here in different ways. Let's continue about these three systems. Mm -hmm. Today, I present to you the eyes. I present to you the father. I present to you the all. I present to you ascension. Let me share a few things about our people and our growth while we are here. And to do that, I have to touch about touch around about the sociology of our society for a minute in relation to what our path has been. Our path has taken us through the elements, fire, water, earth, and air. We went through the water. We went through the water. You know about that passage. And when we got here, under these circumstances, because like I said, we've always been here. Because we're indigenous to the planet. That's right. <laughs> yeah? That's right. To the planet. Indigenous to the planet. Now everybody know that. The thing is, well, we know that. So I'm here to contribute to that. You know, trumpet blast. Atomic energy. Let me share something with you the sociology. On this table, I have a Bible. A Quran and our great awakening. The book known to us as the Book of the Dead, those that go to the other side and back. Because our book shows you how to get there and back. A lot of times we see these mummy movies. That's the really the only book I know that they talk about that can bring you back from the dead. That's what it was for, that's what it was designed to do. Okay. Then that we was introduced to the Bible in our development stage. Yeah, we was given the Bible, and the Holy Bible. This what this is, the Holy Bible. I just want to share a few things about, about this thing. Well, today I don't want to get too much at all. I want, I want to share some things. This one here, the Jerusalem Bible, the old book. Oh, this one here, he said, I have to about two different ones here. 
the Great Awakening, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the Papyrus of Ani. Now, I want to share some esoteric things with you tonight because we're at the stage where the fundamentals of the history of our people on this is readily available. But the appropriate and proper, potent understanding of these things need to be elaborated upon. And I just want to share this other book here. I have one half the size of this table. <laughs> I don't know what that that is this table. A book. A papyrus. A book of the Great Awakening. But this is another of our book of the day. Right? Same papyrus of any different publishers, hard covers, soft covers, a number of them. Done by scholars from around the world. Now, why I show you that is to show you this. So we got a number of issues that our society and our community are, are addressing. And I brought some papaya. <laughs> you know, I some papaya. You know, because this is the original paper. These are some of the sacred seals. You know, I'm gonna share these with you because today all kinds of groups are known for representing these sciences that's directly from out of Africa. Now, I've been to a gazillion <laughs> esoteric scrolls. You know, life path is the manifestation of it. This here book right here is the book to the pyramid. <laughs> See, we had a number of brothers that came throughout our legacy and manifested certain knowledge, certain energies of leadership. And to come to mind right now, thinking about Frederick Douglass. You know, Frederick Douglass was the black man that was involved with the powerful initiation into the age of Aquarius. Frederick Douglass was an Aquarius. So was Abraham Lincoln. Now think about that. That's interesting. You know, I once found some literature on Abraham Lincoln, where they were saying he wasn't a Mason. You know, that most places you check it say that. But then I found in a rare book, an old book, a picture with him with Masonic Regella on. You know, you know with Masonic Regella, right? And seeing the seals that he had on, I know that he was part of the order before it became the compass in the square. But he bared the five point star and with the new system came with the six point star. Right? Don't get scared. Nothing to get scared about. <laughs> Don't get scared. Listen, this is life stuff for us. Right? Because it's ours. You know, I always say the ancestors have been with us and is with us, and we're the manifestation today. We gave a nigga on that. <laughs> Ain't nobody nigga on that. Because this day and time, ah, this is what they talk about. See, this is the original ju judgment. This here, this picture come on, 
the walls of the temples of ancient Africa. But you gotta look, you gotta see how this guy all these ancient Africa. This is past, present, and future and beyond. Because this is what's taking place here. This is let me show you. This is known as the judgment. The judgment of Ani. Ani is this individual right here. He's also right here. He's coming in with his wife, his female companion. They're right there together. He's coming before what is known as two divine goddesses here. And another one, Mesquinette and Rene. And shared destiny. He's coming before Anubis at the scale. And the imposing thoughts is the stenographer. We got a lawyer with his horrors. Who's right here? Here goes. Now in today's case, he got a jackal head. He would be the 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 DA. He's supposed to prosecute people on behalf of the divine government of heaven. You got you got to check. That's why you got to get these scales. Go past these scales where your heart is weighed against the feather of my ox. Now I've been through this. I lived this in the most dynamic way. Let me share a few things with you about this. You got three times three. Listen, this is the judgment right here. This is what is known as the jury of the divine, of the natural rule. I want to count the members of this, this panel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Anybody know anything about a jury trial in today's court? That's what you pick. You pick a jury of twelve. But you'll also see this depiction with the number 14. There's no discrepancy because that's the same number that's manifested in the jury pool no matter what because they're two, two alternates. That's 14. So you'll see this here as 12 and 14. Right? This person is being weighed here. Now, now if you don't make it, well, however you make it, you gotta get past Ani, known as the devourer of souls. So if you know, if you, you know, if it's found that you ain't you ain't right, that's a possibility that you gotta be uh, addressed on that level and what that represents, what that's symbolic of. Ani, this is a three-part composite. The picture. No, I ain't buying. Uh, Red fine a female. That's a female. But it's rare to find her depicted in a female form. Whereas the gods that all the principals have, you know, they like have, they look like a female like we. And then they have animal attributes. That's symbolic of certain natures that they represent. You always see her beast out. <laughs> you know? It don't look like she turned his back. Right? You know what I mean? He, he stay on that side. That one. Alright? So, but now, obviously, I knew he went to the judgment and he made it. This is very important because. I mean, this is, you don't realize how important this is. Yeah. Ani is introduced by Horus, Ru, into the presence of Osiris and the two goddesses that assist him, Isis and the Fighting. 
Before Osiris is a lotus plant with the four sons of Osiris on it. And these are representative of a lot of what fours mean, the elements, the number four, the emperor, all kinds of things. It's, it's, it, it just goes on and on. You're just touching upon a few things. But this is also an introduction into these books. And I said we're going to talk about some of the esoterica of our passage into today's time. And that's in and out of teaching of these scriptures. For these books here, we know we got many churches all over the world. One of the predominant religions in the world, Christianity. And Judaism. Hebrewism, the two books. The book is a Semitic text. The Old Testament in these books are depicting what is known as the Hebrew language. Right? In a lot of these books, you can open the book, and it's, it's the Hebrew, and then you, eat, you read the English translation or whatever language you're speaking, you're going to get in another translation. But that's also what takes place in the Quran. You know, right here, go to the Quran. Right? And what's interesting about these translations here, you said probably, what's brother? Is that they have the Arabia and the English translation. Footnotes, no kind of now, but these are Semitic people. You know, they, they, they put the, they the, the sons, right? No sons? That's what, that's Shem. And, the, and, and this is, the, that's the Semitic, the father of the Semitic race and people. So they got a book. They ain't got a story. And their brothers over here who are also Semitic, the Muslim, the Arab, they got a book. And in their book, you know, they got, that's another form of Semitic language, the Arabic and the English translation. But in the large, see, in the church, we got the, the Bible on the altar, the Holy Bible. But in the Masonic at large, which is a secret society, uh, spiritual believing individuals who have the Bible on their altar. But what's the difference between having the Bible on that altar and the Bible that's on the altar in the church? It's obviously it's something different. Something different is taking place. There's a different understanding of the Bible on the indoors in that house. They got different understanding. They, they teach teaching something different. So they got what is known as the inner and outer understanding of what we're dealing with, sociologically. And these are what are supposed to be secret elements of society that we're dealing with daily, one way or the other. Anytime you're dealing with the system. Just to share another little insight about this here, is that the beautiful thing is let me show you this book here. The one thing, see this eagle wanna fly. See that? This eagle wanna fly. So, that's the crook. That's the shepherd ship. That's the leadership. That's the divine leadership. The Great Awakening. You know, they call this the Book of the Dead by archaeologists all around the world because they always find it with our ancestors. They always find this scroll and many like it with our ancestors in the pyramids, in the tombs, in mountains, 
all over the underwater. They find inscriptions of this book. Our book. Now it's very important that we understand the importance of sharing with you how powerful seeing this book is. They used to say, I mean many years ago, I was dealing with that. They had advertisements and catalogs and stuff like that that said, stay away from this book. They're they selling it, but saying, stay away from it. <laughs> stay in love. This is, now that's an interesting book that addresses this. Masters of the Hidden Place. <laughs> now listen, let me tell you this. I'm telling you right now that this here book is the book to the pyramids, to this system in Africa. It has our language, our writing, hieroglyphics in different forms, heretic, demonic, cursive, shorthand, print. The hieroglyphics is the print. The heretic is the cursive, and the demonic is the shorthand. Where do you think that come from? That's another one of our systems. Paper, papyri. That's it. Can also be found 
in our text. Because these are the people that, they, they ain't visitors, they're outside writers. But what does our doctrine say? What is written on our wall? What is written on our pillars? What is written in our scrolls? Everything that they got from over here, they transferred over here. The system. That's right. Now that's a good thing. Because we had some things to learn. We had some things to experience. Mmm, that's required for discipline. See, discipline is, you know, it's peace and power. It ain't nothing weak. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what we were talking about, peace, but we got power. Let me show you something about Moses. Now, we know about Moses over here. And we know about Musa over there, right? We know we can go there to our good brothers of this land. We sent the prophet. We sent the prophet to them. We don't got no problem with them teachers because that's their story, right? The thing is, what well, is our story? Oh, I got the red, black, and green page here. Uh, <laughs> and the red, black, and green altar. See, this is what I'm going to show you something. That, this is, this is the other line going. Our good brother Marcus Garvey happened to be one of the powerful representatives of our kingdom. He came and represented for us after our good brother. Frederick Douglass got a whole host, a whole host of uh, spiritual warriors. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You hear what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. So, this book, now check this out. Now, we know that that story started out in Egypt, right? That Moses born there, became a general, became a prince, became a leader. Had a conflict with his brother Pharaoh and his brother. He prayed as his brother. Now let me tell you, that's their story. That's what that story is here. That's interesting. We like that story. But that's their story. I'll uh, uh, some you, brother. We gave them that. And our good brother's over here. Well, we got interesting history with the good brother. <laughs> Y'all know what kind of history we got with the good brothers. But let me tell you something. Just like with the good, the good brothers over here. They were required. They were required. But at the same time, everybody goes to the judgment. That's just in the back of existence. So, you know, your contribution will see what you actually contributed to what was the grand design of our forefathers. You know, because this thing was already written. It's written around the world. This story. So that's what, you know, let me help you understand where I'm coming from. So this story of ours is written around the world. Everything. Everywhere. Now this book is over here. This book, as I said, is in the the Masonic Lodge on the altar. Now this is in complement to what's outside in the outer court of the church with the families and the people. And they're getting knowledge. 
but it's different levels of knowledge that's being shared. Now, everyday issues going on out here, but for so long we had only been getting magnificent displays of what the theology was and what's available to the good brothers and sisters. And it's time for the advancement. They, that, they, that, that was given to them. They go on to that. Our thing is on us and our empowerment. That's right. This is what this is about. This is about black folks talking to black folks. That's right. Past, present, and future revelation. Words of power. Let me share something about these. These got some, the, the story is we go out to touch on because we're dealing with the spiritual sociology right now and the esoteric sociology right now because there are so many different dimensions to our everyday life it's required to touch upon them as a matter of fact. You know, we know that. Right? We just gonna build on that. We ain't gotta go mess around with that this, we, we live this, we taught this. So these things that we just instinctively and of a higher level or on another level intuitionally know along with our conscious rational observations. You know, these are just, 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 you know, these are fundamental to our brain cells and our DNA. You know, I was just seeing something powerful about us today on, I think, on, online, social media, Facebook. They got the brother on there. Good brother, good rich in spirit. Rich in spirit, brother. He uh, developed a, a design that extracted water from out of air. You know how you go dig a well and all that in the ground, right? And you know water dropped from out of the sky. But what we're breathing, everything we're in water now, H2O. We got two thirds oxygen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what happened is he developed a, a design that extracts water out of the atmosphere pump, just a, pump coming out of the air. So he uh, donated and set up a couple of these in a number of places. And now ain't that something? So that's just, you know, we always we had the other brother that did the, the water, that the vehicles caused to run over water. We're the other brother that did that. Now, listen, hold on, listen. Understand why I got this. Listen, listen that, that, that's physics. The, the manifestation for the people. It's for the people. Another energy source. And, no, and then the car, the car that's running off of water, its emissions is water. Not toxic chemicals. <laughs> Listen, this is the black folk. This is the beauty of the black mind. That's one of a gazillion manifestations of how beautiful we are. Let me continue to address some of the issues here in this book here. The issue here is that, again, out of court church, in court laws. When it comes to a certain degree in the laws, where they switch books on the altar, shriners. The shriners degree in the Masonic steps and ladder of development is where they use the Quran on the altar. Because in society, that's a major part of society. And there's a general sociological ex 
esoteric understanding of the scriptures, the Holy Quran, just like over here, the Hebrew text. There's an esoteric understanding to the book, and they have it on their altar, and there's another history that they propagate and understand. And they represent it. They're dressed in the garb of the people that this is their book and this is their language. But these are degrees. We went through a lot of this society with all kinds of stuff. Christianity, many different Christian churches, all kinds of numbers you can go on. The different go on, on different branches. Different understanding, different theology, propagating different things, but united in names and texts, you know? And, and in some way, the good work and divine work that would come with that if you're truly about it. <laughs> but we also know the history of these tools being used as a control mechanism for us. We gonna understand that. We gonna understand that which gives the Lord for us to learn to read. We gonna understand that. Because once we see what was being hidden, we understand why. You see? We understand why. Now, this, this ain't the cat out of the bag. This the, 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 the crook. Out of the sand. <laughs> this is the book. This is the book. This is the book from the pyramids. Now we have different brothers that come and talk to science. Like I said, look at Marcus Mosaic God. And Elijah Muhammad. Powerful brother, powerful brother, powerful brother. It was seen in the works, and still is seen in the work. Well, regardless to the scripture, cause we put it out there. So when we embrace it, we're gonna have another understanding of it. Cause we're another people. We're human beings, and then you got mankind. Talk about all that Bible too. You know, but there was some you know, two creations in front of the Bible. Who were they? Then later on, they was created. Uh, Adam and Eve and Lilith and all that. That that story, right? That's told semantically in different ways throughout both books. See, you know, I have to touch upon these things because it's required to show the steps that. We have been taken in so many ways in general society where we get our different brother. But I want to share something about the good brother Noble Drew Ali. You know. What he did was added on to the flag that Moses, Marcus Moses Moses from the red, black, and green to us here. Right? Uh, this is what this is what you this is what you gotta see. I'm gonna show you the divine power and what I'm talking about. Because those same colors was our colors of power back in commitment. Now you can go look on the wall. Go look at go look at a book. I got two books. I'm going to show you that dumb colors hold the most sacred part of these mysteries. I can talk about the judge in this papyrus. The judgment. I didn't talk about the judge in this so far. I named a few people. I named everybody else except the judge. 
osados. Islam, 
So he became uh, a brother to bring us science from Egypt by way of Africa to Morocco, another country now, and back to the States and unite that in our nationalism. Based on the revelations that he had, based on the degrees that he was working with. He was dealing with the degrees of this book. And he was dealing with the degrees of this book. But he was depicting the comedic teachings in this fashion, that his book, his pamphlet that he brought to us, The Circle Seven, combined Christian Islam, they say Muslim, but their, their focus is Christ. And that portion of Christ that they're dealing with is dealing with the part of the 18 missing years of Christ. Right? Now it's interesting because I wanted to show that these start, these stories are starting in Egypt, And we're gonna say it started with with, uh, with Christ, Jesus Christ as well. Because when he was born, his first day before the night was over with, he was instructed, his family was instructed by the divine to take the infant into Egypt, where it would be protected and raised. Now that's the first day, day of night. He sent from out of the land that he did, that he's, that portion of Africa, that portion of Egypt, because that was ours too. That's right there on the border, where they claim it's Egypt. And it, that's, that's our territory. Now, to give you understanding about that is this. He was raised in Egyptian temple. Yes, sir. That's what the scripture says. They say, they say that he was taken there for his protection and to be raised there. And now, why would the divine instruct this child of Simply to go into Egypt to be protected and to be raised up? Because all the divine lessons are taught there. And the portion of the system, whether we accept it or not, are manifestations on a number of levels of the potency of the story and the revelation. So, to elaborate on that is to point out that again, that story is our story to a people. Because it started out in Egypt again. Let me show you how this book come from Egypt. Not only on the divine level, but just on the genetic level. The father of book on the prophet level is Abraham. Abraham is the father of people. Abraham had a a, a wife and child, right? A they, they, they happen to be divined uh, an African princess. Abraham in this story had a divine purpose and that was to assist in the expansion of that African kingdom. So he was presented with a black comedic princess. Now, in the Hebrew text, they call her a slave from Egypt, from the from the Pharaoh. You're gonna give them guess what to me? But this is this is for the spouse of Pharaoh. So the lady that was passed on to him was of a high revelation. She had to be there to make sure that the the divine power is being influenced on them people who had some some real blood there. 
she ended up being the mother of Abraham's first child, Hagar. Because things take a while for different people. Sarah couldn't get it at the time, so she, you know, she suggested that maybe you need to do a little something with Hagar. You know, because you got a divine purpose in life. Right. We want to make sure things, uh, the, the power of the Almighty is expressed forever. So, Hagar had a child named Ishmael. They became the, the progeny, the mother of what is known as the Arab people. The people known as the Arab and all of them of that branch, their mother was Hagar, an ancient Egyptian black princess from Kemet. So everything is starting now in this pyramid city of ours. So we see that these books, these major doctrines, is is the strong part of our sociology, spiritual sociology, our brain. We are taught this, we come up, it's everywhere. But we see that the books that was given to them is being amplified. And the community that was given to them and the spiritual revelation that was given to them is being amplified. On both sides of these Semitic brothers, we provided that for them. We had no problem about that. What the issue is for us now is out of the initiation of our people to evolve on this sheer plateau of the manifestation of our true awareness of this system that we called into being. We called the pyramid into being to be transferred from there to here. Let me tell you something about how what's ours, what's connected to us on the car level, on the bar level, on the cool level, on the skim level, on the sapu level, on the rim level. We have a spiritual anatomy that we're not being taught on a general level. To each one of these books, there's a spiritual anatomy. Our thing is coming into the spiritual anatomy of our own text, of our own revelations. Our thing now is to awaken to the responsibility of who we are and what our path has been and that this is the new era of ride and die. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's do that again. Ride or die. That's what you hear. Peace and power. The temple in Shekin. We start out by honoring our postures. Now that's we're dealing with the self. One of the revelations of the energies of the awakening today for us has been what they have been calling the Wakandan salute. Which is just a, a, a powerful representation of it's an African system, it's an African greeting. Right. Let That's me right. show you the so the source of that. The source of that posture. Right over left. Yes, you see them? They buried like that. All of our ancestors in that land are buried with the X. Why? It's like the Matrix. Why? 
That's right. That's not just the salute of how it manifests for us today as the Rwanda, the Rwanda salute, but that's the ancient salute of God. That's the ancient salute of our ancestors. That's how we read each other. You know what that X represent? I introduced myself by the name Osiris, Osiris, X, Unepa, Neb, Er, Tetra. My number? Nine, nine, nine. It's something to work with. Manifestation of these attributes is essential. We just can't talk this thing. If we had a dynasty then, the dynasty still exists. Check this out. Conscious awareness that this dynasty that I'm talking to you about, as a celestial, as an eternal, as a watcher, as the truth, Makaru, true of voice. That's in the Kemetic language of our ancestors. And as I said, the true of voice. It's important that you get these revelations because they wasn't properly dispensed. They were dispensed on the level of what we was ready for at that time. That's right. Because that's why they came to these other books. We, we, we got that in those degrees, we, we got access to it. We got these degrees, man. We got, those, we got access to it. We got this degree, we got access to it. We see it all the time. Now the degree here that we're stepping up is into what our book said. What are the stories in our book that are written in hieroglyphic that's also translated in English, uh, in American, or in a language that if you look at it, take the time and see it, you will understand it on a level that other people ain't understanding it. Because it's connected to your DNA. It's ours. Now, this is the matter of historical fact accepted by all the nobility of academia. That this book is older than both these books put together. That's just accepted as fact, scholarly fact. We know that. We also know that this book is from Egypt and it's the book to the pyramids. It's inscribed in the walls, in the temples, on stones, different stones, on jewels, on papyrus, on scrolls, for thousands of years. These revelations have, to, have manifested all over the world. Let me take a look at this. This uh, water on our face. This is good. Okay. So I'm not taking water from my. What, what, what is it? Transference of energy. Right? This comes from right out of the atmosphere. You can get it right out of the earth. The earth running, the mineral kingdom. The mineral kingdom. Let me partake of myself. <laughs> Look at that. Now that ain't a commercial. <laughs> Don't you, don't you back. That's that H2O. That's that H2O. Yes, sir. Not do that. Let me tell you something. I'm going to 
bad fella in times and in terms of the terms of where we come from on a, coming from this life that we have to live in this world. A warrior of the most high power kind. That's not just just rich. That's not just rap. I ain't get his way to hey! You know what I'm talking about? I ain't just get here like this, just like that. You know what it takes? You know what it takes? These degrees? The story is, is you're going to get it later. But let us be the manifestation of what is required right now. What's required right now is just a, a better understanding of who we are and who we're dealing with. Right. Now we have to understand that these are all our books and we pass them on. But the ones for us, these were scripture, this was alphabetical formulas for those people. That's why they went for some of us to a certain degree. They only allowed it to a certain degree. For you to fulfill your true potential, you gotta go back to you, our degree, our DNA, our African-centered thought and spirit. From that base, perpendicular, from that base, we can make any everything happen. We already made everything happen. Check that out. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm telling you that every part of this system I can show you in command. You know, spoke about legislator, judicial, executive branches. Yes, sir. I, I connected them to the three pyramids of the plan. I said that these systems utilize in government. These are the, these are the systems that. Uh, this is an extraction of ours to the degree that they can work with. To the degree that they can work with. Let me point out something. The system here had went through a tremendous ramshackle on, on this level. And uh, we had a good brother, Obama, and his family, his wife and kids, be representative of the divine hand in this system for us. You know how much blood we got on these lands? You know how much blood is ours is spilled daily as a sacrament that connects us to the land, to this earth? So the good brother and his family, the black family, was representative at a time that stabilized a collapsing world economic. Yes, sir. Reality. You know, they stole so much, had for all kinds of insurance, they, they just robbed the whole system and blind. It's like you tap the body. If you tap the body like a turn body, you extract it. These, these, they're going to collapse in some kind of way. And all the countries around the world was falling. You know, you, you know the signs of every ass. So just mention me and mention. Because you got all this thing under our belt. The reality of our revelations here is that them systems of government upon our awakening of who we are, we get a better appreciation of the manifestation and know that it's required for us to raise it ourselves. 
It can't be fixed no other way. It can't be fixed no other way. They don't have those degrees. Listen. They corrupted their manifestation in terms of the responsibility. What I was saying about that black family, they came in there, in the system that was collapsed, collapsing, stabilized. You know what it takes to stabilize? The world. Yes, sir. We got all our different understandings of that situation. But the reality is what I'm pointing out to you. They were the manifestation of that era of leveling off the pyramid system. It took that DNA to reset. You know who called for it? The world. The only president where the whole world was involved with him being the president of America. <laughs> Come on, what are you talking about? That's what, ain't that a fact? Yes, sir. You got it. It's, it's a celestial understanding about that. All of it, all of us. These degrees of our path of empowerment is why I'm here. We just can't talk this thing. We got to manifest this thing. So I present myself to you in the alignment, in the legacy. Not just real, not just real, but my Karoon. What, what is the power? True voice. That's how I'm giving this up. These are alchemical bowls. These are alchemical bowls. The power of breath. You know what you do with the power of breath? That's the power of life. Those are the intonations of an order and of a degree that's coming from way back when. Better with that for us 
at this time. You just can't get the knowledge and be just let go. Your understanding is so amplified that you know that you can't let go. That's a delusion. <laughs> this is what it is. This is what the call is. This is what the purpose is. Now, the African vision. The understanding for us is that like the American dream, it's a beautiful dream. That's what that's dream, yeah. Even I was a representative of the war, Martin Luther King. He had a dream connected to the American dream. Yes, sir. Yeah. We got a lot of blood involved in that dream. A lot of sacred spills. I harness that by never forgetting that, by embracing that. You know, that spirit of cream rises alchemically to its, its proper placement. Once you can reap the nutrients and the proteins, the atomic weight. My brothers and sisters, I'm letting you know that the dynasty, the pyramid dynasty, enterprise, is here. Now, like I said, this the revelation of these, these scrolls here came, where it came from, it's biblical. It's historic. It's divine. All the divine understanding. I'm not just here on the film tent. My history is what it is. <laughs> I'm telling you what it is. You know? People have paid a picture of you, but we're required to paint a picture of ourselves. <laughs> you know what I'm telling you, my brothers? Right. I'm telling you. We're required, listen, the scale of judgment. People put something on that scale, they'll say this is you. That's what they say. But you got an opportunity to defend yourself or just show who you are. But putting what's required in the other pan of the scale that's representative of you. And have it weighed against what they're saying in the strength of what you're saying. Let me see that revelation right there, my brother. <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> see, that's when, that's when we know it's authentic. You know, we, we comfortable here. We comfortable with the role that's required. Yes, sir. Yeah? You know, listen, I'm telling you, what's it? You know, some of these little brothers, I was just waiting to hear the story. Been there! Through all the stories! Dante Inferno, that come from us. That's our story. That come from our book. All these stories come out of this book. All you have to do is check this book out, and you'll see the roots to all of them stories. I'll be back to tell you again. Take to the next level. Where am I going? This is what I'm telling you. This is our goal. vision is. You know, within the span of the African vision, it's continuous. It is 
don't say, let me see this all gone. It ain't just no bubble. It's a stream of bubbles. It's a stream of dreams. That's what we're talking about. Being seated in God. Listen. God consciousness. The acts represent Christ's anointing. That was already around thousands of years ago before Rwanda uh, what is revealed today as African spaces of, uh, of science you don't realize to what degree our science exist throughout the omniverse. Not just here on this level. The universe and the omniverse, there's, and then within the omniverse, there are the zillion universes. Now listen, what I'm sharing with you is that what we're dealing with here is, 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 is manifesting on so many levels. Where we at today, the fact that we're here, you know who's passing every day? That's you. We got a lot of stories that's in the blood. That's, that's on these grounds. There used to be an ancient sacred tradition that, I've, that I'm going to tell you that it still manifests on a natural level. Then nature is going to make sure that the ground is blessed. Because <laughs> it's all connected. But what looks one way is manifested in another way. So you see them, listen, you don't see like all these slave depictions. Ah, uh, history over here. You know what it takes to survive that? You know what was required to, to, to still deal with that on the level that it's manifesting on today? Yeah. Mass media. Mass media. Mass media. Magic. We see what's good or bad. A lot of people don't know that the term and the name media come from a sorceress, Medea, in the story of Sinbad and all that. Going to get the golden fleece and all that. Jason and the Argonauts. Mm. The princess that guarded, that lived on that island where that golden fleece was, that lamb skin, that was up in the tree guarded by a dragon. Her name was Medea. And she was a sorcerer, and her father was the lord of these lands. He was a high power sorcerer, he was the sorcerer of the land. But because she liked his Jason, She, she gave him access to get past the dragon and to get the golden fleet because she liked him. Huh? And the dude coming from somewhere else, I like the dude. And he's obviously a boy who had to be here and something gave him to go through all kinds of stuff to come in and get this. You know what I'm saying? The fleets. You know. You know what you gotta do to go get the fleets? <laughs> You know what I'm telling you? You know what you got to do to go and get that fleece? And the reason that he had to go get the fleece was to come back and restore to life the woman that he loved, the princess of the land. Because while she was sick, the land was sick. He had to venture off and go through various trials. Yes. Tribulations. 
That's our story. I'm telling you, our story is all our story. That's a bad, bad, bad story. That's why you got to get to the beauty of our stories. We're constantly making stories today with our young brothers out there in the world, our young sisters making stories in the world. All kinds of stories, up and down, this way and that way. They stories. There's a lot of ways, different ways that they communicate now. But this communication towards our empowerment is for us. It's not against nobody. Matter of fact, it's to heal everybody. The reason why it's going to heal everybody because it's empowering us with corrective consciousness. Ah, surgery. Shamanic surgery. Shamanism. You know, I, you know what that is when you can go from here to there, when you're a traveler, I'm a high plane drifter. I'm a high plane drifter. Mm. I got something to talk to you about. These are the degrees. And I'm gonna give it to you like you're supposed to get it. Presentation is a beautiful thing. You gotta see what, what's coming. <laughs> yeah. Extraterrestrial, metaphysical. That's here now. That's why I'm telling you now that this already exists. It ain't stopped existing. The, the, our society, the government, the system is ours. How it is depicted is depicted in the images of the people that was basically a part of the program to manifest our destiny. They know it. You know, I got the hieroglyphic seals in my flesh. <laughs> but my, 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 my manifestation, I got hieroglyphic seals of the highest order in my flesh. Every time I look at myself, I see the truth. I say that because that's why I was there so you don't know forget. You can't forget! Hey, listen. Remember the old Kung Fu movie where the guy was initiated in the monasteries to various degrees? And when you reach a certain level, in order for you to move on, where you can go out into the domain that you've been taught, was that you had to move this pot. That's right. And tattoo yourself by burning into your flesh. Not only do you know that that's what it tells society who you are and what you did to require, they don't have to know you. Let's see that they know what it took to get that. Hmm. Right? That's right. You know where that legacy come from? Right. You have to do is Google it. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. It's there, the information is available. The information is available, just like I'm telling you. Listen, I got another book over here, very interesting book. The Lost Keys of Freemasonry by Manny P. Hall. Very interesting book. There's a picture in here. I particularly like it. It's a depiction of what is known as the Master Mason. I don't know if you can see that. He's on top of a pyramid with an altar. He has an ump living in his head. And he's, he has just went through initiation to get there. He could have lost his life in there in, in what was required. But he made it to the top of the pyramid. And he had just came out from within the domain. 
And this is called the Master Mason. That's in this book. The depiction of John 9. And what they're saying about that. You gotta see how it started. You have to be, you have to bless yourself with our story. Our story is so wonderful. It's so powerful. Right. It's so dynamic and majestic. It's enough to make you satisfied no matter wherever you at. Yeah! You heard it? Make you satisfied no matter where you at. You know what kind of energy that is? What kind of power that is? By nature, it's a humbleness. By nature, it's a humbleness. Just that. Because it's appreciation. If you appreciate, that's a, that's a humbleness. You know what I'm saying? And with that comes power. Because if you can appreciate it, then you value it. And then it's bestowed upon you. You have to be able to be honored by it. Respect that you're being honored by it. the blessing. This is a blessing. This is a blessing. That's the great judgment. We just got some energies around us, some some high liquors, some pictorials that I'm pointing out because this is how we convey knowledge through pictures. To the pictorials, everywhere you go, we got the pictures. And then you go on the pyramids, you go on the tomb. It's pictures, life size, bigger, showing how we live, showing you how we look. Once you can embrace that, what, what? You gotta have that wherever you look, where in your environment. You gotta constantly remind yourself. You gotta have. The links, not just walking around, you gotta have the links. You should have an arm. These are the common denominators that's required to build up our common denominators, our unity. We know that our arm, the original crossing key to our empowerment, our divine empowerment, we know that it represents eternal life. Eternal life and light. It's important to understand that different crosses represent different things. For instance, we know that the Roman cross appeared to Constantine, right? He was in a battle. He saw a sign of the cross or something in the sky. He adapted it, then he went it, and then adapted that as the symbol of his new revelation because now he felt that God, the Christian God, had revealed that to him and allowed him to come out of the situation as the victim and adapted the symbol. But that's what it became the symbol, the primary symbol for white empowerment. That's that's just fact. That's where it came from. And since then, that's what they swore to represent the cross, the weapon of the cross, and their advancement into other lands and cultures because everybody had a form of the cross. Different kinds of cross, different cultures. They're gonna recognize the element of what it represents. But in this manifestation, this force, this is representative of their cross. And their cross, like our cross, represents 
immortality and life, immortal life. That's what it's called, eternal life. That's what it, our traditions teach us about. That the divine among ourselves carried this emblem, this symbol. Now, when we're talking about the Roman cross, which has been used in Christianity and Catholicism as the tool to kill um, Yahshua, Jesus, right? That, that was the tool by which the Romans used to line the streets with bodies and kill people that they considered criminals and, and the undesirable. The whole road would be lined up with these crosses, top cross. And bodies would be hanging up there. And it's like when you go to jail now, to the jail there, the jail there, but you go to the cross, you'll put your, your father up there, your brother, your mother, or wife, that's where you go to visit them. You go on to visit them right there, they hanging on the cross. <clears throat> Until they die right there. They, they bring them stuff, trying to give them some water and all that. That's what that's if you're allowed that. Or you have to walk past in the crowd and let them see you. Right? Everywhere we know about that cross, this is your thing cross. We ain't saying that back up. You're saying what it represents. We're going to say what it represents. The cross, in that sense, has, from the beginning, been used in Christianity as the tool to torture all the undesirable and who was considered criminal. So it was a tool like an electric chair. They crucified you. you. You got judged, you went to governor, you got judged. So you got crucified. That you got sentenced to death. So that's what that cross is represented. It's what it was tool of that Roman government. It's power, white power, Roman power. So its various manifestations since then has been a tool for the empire. Like, you know, you see the old pictures of when the, the, the Europeans came to these shores and they showed them the Indians and it's always uh, the religious leaders up front with the cross, right? And it's the cross and the, the different stuff got this. And, and the warriors come behind them. Well, every time that has shown up in a lot of times, in a lot of ways, it has been to terrorize. Yes, sir. We're just talking about the truth. They terrorize Christ. They talk, he's tortured. That's t personal terrorism. We're just talking about the various tools that exist and what they were used for. Yeah, but yeah, it, when you see the crowd, that's got to be laid on judge. Well, well, how you did. But what it did, it was just used as an example of how it is used today. You know, the Ku Klux Klan, you know how they, every time they want to terrorize you and, and show white supremacy, they bring the cross and burn it. That's to terrorize you. This is white supremacy. The Germans had their own cross. They used an ancient cross that wasn't dead. That cross go back way before it. When they come in contact with it was through um, the East Indians and through Theosophy, through Madame Blavatsky, Theosophical Society, Dunbar, and, the, and that through Crowley and them, right? That's where they come into them, them, them tools for their esoteric societies that was governing everything that they were doing. These were the tools and seals that they was working with. Now to connect us to our empowerment, because that was these are the seals for their empowerment. These are their seals of authority. This is their cross and this is ours. Paul, you know, we black folks, we beautiful people just that. Everybody else is beautiful in their own way because within this universe, it all comes from us. It just has to be put in this proper perspective. Hopefully I later on get the time to explain to you all how we got there. But how we're here now is that we went through the course. So the Navy people with the seals and all. You see the course that the seals got to go through? The Navy seal? 
That is nothing to the course that we took to get here. Yeah? So, listen, for proper perspective on this system and our empowerment, on all the levels that we are existing, sociologically, politically, spiritually, culturally, minerally, on the animal level, kingdom. You know, we 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 we're here with a spirit of holistic empowerment. Our embrace is holistic, and that's gonna sustain us against any corruption. Any corruption. Thank you for the opportunity of talking to the brothers and the sisters. Like I came in peace and power, Masaru Imhitel. May we all triumph in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, give Brother Osiris a great big hand. We're going to have a quick question and answer. The first for about 15 minutes. The first question is going to be from the Zoom audience. Anybody from the Zoom audience have a question for Brother Osiris? Zoom audience? Okay, no question from the Zoom audience. From the live audience. Anybody have a question from Brother Osiris from the live audience? Yeah, I have a question. Okay, well, you gotta hold up first. We'll do you next, my brother. Get my. All right. Okay, Zoom audience, go ahead, state your name and ask Brother Osiris the question, please. Please, please. Please, my brother. Osiris. What's your name? Brother Lumumba. Lumumba. All right, give thanks. Yeah, my question was. Um, is there, you know, a basic uh, book listing that you would suggest to delve a little bit further, um, you know, into the science that you were speaking of? That's the question? That's the question. All right, listen, sure. And, but just the ones that we've spoken about tonight, specifically, the main book, our book, our text, our Bible, our legacy, our empowerment, our language, our culture, our pyramid, our celestial and divine influx of power for, for the beautiful things that we got to offer and the beautiful things that we're gonna manifest. That's what I got to offer you, primarily. Let me just deal with that, because there's a whole lot of stuff to, to, to recommend. But I'm going to get in the book. Get that understanding of that book, brother, and work with it until you to connect to your DNA, until you understand it. There's a lot of people teaching different things on that. That's a good thing. It amplifies your thought through the information that's available from the other good brothers, the Giras, right? The, the teachers, the brothers that's here today and that has passed on. Noble brothers, nobles. Like nobles of the Mystic Shrine, these are nobles. Noble warriors. So, in honor of those warriors, in the honor of what resides within you, let me offer you and recommend to you our book. There's a lot of publishing companies that got the book out. The papyrus of the brother Ani, he was a scribe and he had written for him a scroll on his life and on his introduction into the divine family amongst the heavens in paradise, on earth and on multi-dimensional levels. He requested entry to not only on this plane, he was requesting entry 
to access to our multi-dimensional placement. We got multi-dimensional placement. A lot of times we be visiting them and don't even know we're visiting them. A lot of times when you wrestling, you those of you that have received certain dreams and they showed you that this something is just realer than real. <laughs> hey, you ain't, you ain't just in your mind, within your body. You just you you traveling within the mind of everywhere else. And sometimes we we uh, allow entry on an unconscious level. But our sciences teaches about life beyond the general perspective, let's say for instance, the American dream. What we're concerned with in the American dream. Beautiful things, but they're very limited in terms of the freedom of knowing that we have an African vision and it provides guidance on a multi-dimensional level. And that, that, that dream, although nice for some now, what's required for us is the vision from our own source, with our own postulates. You ain't got to look for where it's at, it's right there written. It's coming from the spiritual anatomy of our legacy, of our cartouches, our seals. I have cartouches. Seals. You see the line of that seal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We gotta be conscious of the seals that we represent. Call me empowering other people to our deputy. A lot of times it's to our deputy. We're empowering people bearing their seals, and in some cases, our seals but used for another person's purpose, another people's purpose. Our thing is to concentrate on us, turn our energies to us, unite amongst our family. We don't want to talk to known globally to say brother, sister. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't want to talk like that. Okay, we got another question from the floor. Thank you, thank you, my brother. The next question is from the floor, brother Mike. Yeah, just um, during your lecture, and you was describing um, growth and development, and you talked about how in a temple, uh, you described the individual that once he reached a certain level, he would carry something out of the temple and from there he would be forever branded and those who passed those same degrees that he did would recognize the marks on his arm. Were you talking about the Shaolin Temple? I was talking about that was an example that we are generally aware and, and, of. In the connection with us. Right. Right. Uh, and I'm sharing that and that what they're talking about, what they're demonstrating is that culture is an old culture. Their culture, they still got their language. They still got their land. They still got their religion. Everybody else that we're dealing with in this melting pot over here still got their language, still got their religion, still got their native tongue. That all contributes to your strength and your connection. That gives you another way of communicating. That's another way that separates you from somebody else. To, excuse me, know your language. They don't know your foods. We got all that here. But they, they register different principles within us. 
even the food. That's why people look different wherever they at. Because the foods and the nourishment and the plant life molds your skin complexion, molds your DNA, it contributes to your look. These are minerals that you, you, you dealing with the alchemical process that you can always change. Shape shifters. We see that people do people. I can see people like six, seven hundred try here and try come back down to get a other you know, what you could do with this, inflate this, and do with this. I haven't been so many, I didn't have so many bodies working out, training, them, demonstrating, doing things, all on the level. It's real. I have a tough for that now. This share that the thing is authentic. And that's what we need, authentic truth. Yes, sir. Anybody else from the Zoom audience have, have a question? Zoom? Okay, question from the floor. Go ahead, Sister Yasmin. Yeah. Uh, peace. Thank you for the information, right? Um, I studied with Queen of Poor, and we did take the woman, and our husband was there, and he helped us, and, and I had to buy that book, right? The book on, um, the book of the day. Right. I had that book. The Great Awakening, yeah. Just a few things, just for synchronization purposes. You got the book. It's in, it's in your place for a reason. That's all. It's connected to your legacy, not to the family. It's a whole thing for that being in your presence, in your house. You, you got the book that is buried. And did you know what was required for them to come from under the sand? Once you see the history about that, right? So I suggest that along with looking at this book, there's other books. Like for instance, with the Muslims, they got this Quran, but they got supporting texts. Hadiths, different numbers of them, different schools of thought got different numbers. But to these books here, they got the Zahar, the Book of Splendor. The Kabbalah. See, those are other books that help you understand what, what you work with here. And these books, this is what they're doing on the inner court. This is why they're on the altar in the large, you know, the leaders of the church. And, you know, you can't what's there. That's what we're talking about. That's family working with the degrees that they got. We're here to provide the greater degrees of who we are. Beyond shrine, beyond the blue law, beyond those York rights. The sky's right. Beyond that, those are lesser degrees for them. Peter the pure. We ain't missing nothing. <laughs> no, 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 no. This ain't missing nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Not, you know. But what it is, God, is everything that's powerful, that's beautiful, that's creative, that's us. And it will take us from here to beyond. That's, that's the nature of this vision. That's the nature of our vision. It's, you know, it's good to have the initiatory steps of the American dream. Those initiatory steps. But we always have questions about where did we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going? Those questions are not addressed in the American dream. The American dream is not really concerned with that. It's concerned with certain liberties, right, uh, based on the level of that dream. It's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's the most potent one here on Earth coming to the world right now because it's coming from the pyramid system. Out, the system is out. It's what is required to maintain this ship, this earth. The control panel. This enterprise. All right, so now 
These, these are top secret. Look, 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 check this out. This is top secret. You hear me, brothers? This is top secret. See, they went up in with the guy's spot and found all kinds of top secret documents. <laughs> That's right. You know? They got documents that top, top, top secret documents. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. I'm telling you, that's top secret. Mm. This is the secret that they've been holding, hiding, that you guys are from Greece to represent. And they can't speak on it unless you're mucked down. I'm a mad woman. You, you, you know, I don't know if people understand what a mad woman is. Yeah, the understanding of that is like those that acquire the wand. Uh, uh, you know, different kind of wands that do different kind of things. Different willpower. Different magic wands. You can get taught by all kinds of places, all kinds of universities, all kinds of schools for this and for that. Esoteric and exoteric. Yeah, let me uh, end by asking, um, is it important for black youth today all over America and beyond to know that we built the pyramids and we built what is considered comedic philosophy? All come from us. Right, let me spell the word comedic. K-H-A-M. T I C Kemetic for the black man for commit. Uh, they got it in the world of alchemy. Chem, a form of it. Black. Chem is what we are talking about is the melanin. Chem, dark, black, folks. That's who we are. And that's what they call ham. The, the, our, our phonetic friends, you know. As humans, as humans, and our brothers, as mankind, we enter into a fellowship with mankind appropriate to our placement. Lord, we place ourselves right. As human, as you eat, Hugh, those of the Hugh, that is what it described when you're dealing with the, the people, when they're talking about the people that they came in contact with that gave them the truth. They described them, describing their Hugh. Like burn this crap up. Clean. Energy radiate. They had on white. They showed me things we didn't. I didn't even know I had. <coughs> they told me to read when I didn't know how to read. Read! That those, they called me up. They called me up. They showed me things. These people of the hill. These human beings. We're only here to bless mankind. We bless mankind. And to show you how divine we are, we have all walked the path of your crucifixions. And that's just the day that, that happened everywhere. Okay, <laughs> that's what happened on this camp. They went all over there and did that, and that's understood. That's a history. 
They was burning all them people up on that thing all over that thing, yeah. Burn, burn them people up. And, uh, and, and, and all, all on, uh, yo, peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and power. When these revelations were first revealed on the planet, it is said, when you look up the history and the legends, it said the divine Lord Osiris manifested in Africa, and after he established divine laws and civilization and built up the pyramid city and paradise on earth, he traveled the world and brought pyramid system there. First of all, I want to thank you for coming hey, to the Brooklyn hey, William Man. Hold up, hold up, hold up. We got a question from the floor, then we'll come back to you. Okay. Uh, 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 okay, who, who, who wants to ask a question? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say this is Willie. On the brother attire, the tie, the headpiece, the garb you wear, and they look like they stick. Is that a uh, serpent's, a serpent's head? And also the background, the bird. Good, good. What about it? In esoteric meaning. Well, this is the eagle. And I'm working with a bird's eye view in my shepherd's ship. Got kaleidoscopic eyes. It's of a silver orientation. And black. These are serious colors. Powerful color. And this is known as the stamp of those who lead. And that's on all levels, whether you're a shepherd of a flock of sheep, goats, pigs, lions, and tigers. But then the spear will come out on another level <laughs> for the other one. We got staffs for them as well. All right, and uh, bearing our attributes is very important, my brother. I want to come and talk to you and show you the manifestation. This please. Uh, watch the static, please. Watch the static. Somebody is static in, please. This piece is uh, meant to display the divinity involved, the grace, the flight. The feathers on I got wings. So with this opportunity to come to our family, it's a display of how we truly live and how you're supposed to live, based on your studies, based on what you come to release from your DNA. Connect yourself to your Kermite legacy. That's where your nationhood is. I don't care where part you world, you say you from, but the human beings, the divine ones I'm talking to. Right now, I'm talking to us human beings. But mankind, they can listen in. I want them to see the great work of our revelation of what we do. That we're conscious that that food is being shared in a banquet of neurons. <laughs> a banquet of neurons. Thank you, Willie. Um, First of all, the Brooklyn William Mackey Jr. History Club, we want to thank you, Brother Osiris, for sharing, coming and sharing. Thank you. My question. Thank you. My question is, the enthusiasm, the hieroglyphics, the CNI, the great historians, the greatness of Africa with the temples and going in the cataracts and different parts, in the years of study, 
How did we wind up losing everything that you have that shows the greatness of Kemet to now? How did it get lost? Because they say once you lose your history and religion, they got you. So how did all the other invaders come in and take that greatness? Because see, you what you're sharing, you can feel it. You can feel it in what you're saying. The spirit you can feel. How did it get lost from Kemet to the Americans? Uh, a vulnerability within our divine spirituality. We're just beautiful people. Wherever we go within the universe, the omniverse, we, we, we bring blessings wherever we at, wherever we go. And, and our embrace of people from the mankind seed and to reveal to them, to mankind, human delectable truths, empowering truths in the arts that we teach of civilization and personal recognition of the possibilities which you possibly can be and produce. How did we lose it? The people that we taught took advantage of our grace. Yeah. Took advantage of our grace. But we allowed ourselves to step off our outside of our boat. The, 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 the schematic. The physics, the blueprint, the celestial blueprint that we have. We got off the base. We got off our own base. We embraced the traditions that we gave other people, that we gave mankind. <laughs> Over our own. We gave them civilization to restore them and to give them some degrees of a better life and awareness of the divine that could be in your life and these gifts that we offer. But their greed, because it exists, only was a part of our overall divine plan. in the perpetuation of our system. Our system is going to be perpetuated no matter what. Our system is going to manifest to you just like this. Let me tell you the appropriate time. You see this seal here? The arc? It could be on Mars. It could be on Uranus. It will unearth itself from out of the ground and fly to us in an asteroid. That chunk of the ground will unearth itself. Come to this earth and land where we can see it and find it. We'll be shown to the world. And it's ours. And just for the mere fact of us seeing it, the mere fact of us seeing it, it's another trigger. It's another alphabetical trigger. It's another trigger to our neurons. The communication shells of our brain. All these things with us, we will affect things and have to affect things outside of this planet. God, let me show you something. And this is very important. The pyramid, I'll tell you another time. This pyramid here, 
Did I display it to you? The brother asked about that earlier. I didn't get around to telling him about it. Is to do the work. This is us. I got different manifestations of our period. Ours has actually got greater esoteric keys in it being exhibited for the dynasty. This is just one of our pyramids. This is the pyramid I'm showing you tonight. This is the spirit that I'm showing you. This is how we have to start connecting ourselves to the pyramid of our empowerment. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen on the Zoom, ladies and gentlemen on the audience, give Brother Osiris a great big hand. We appreciate him coming down, and he will be back. Thank you very much. Give yourself a great big hand. Thank you. Zoom audience, you can unmute yourself. Thank you for participating in the Brooklyn William Mackey Jr. History Club Weekly Lecture.